holy stone. It's a day of rejoicing, and they're dressed up specially for the occasion. A few miles away in Gateshead, the celebration carries on for hours in the streets round about the synagogue, the focal point of the close-knit Jewish community. On this day, one commandment is the mutual exchange of presents between friends and families. Another is giving to the poor. For students from the local Jewish colleges, it's a time to relax from their rigorous studies. This is just one of the many customs, ceremonies, and traditions that have sustained Judaism and the Jewish way of life through centuries of persecution, during which the people were scattered all over the earth. Today, such observances still have the power to unite when the communities are threatened by other, more subtle, but still potentially damaging forces. Just after the war, there were 12 Jewish communities in the northeast of England, each with at least one synagogue. Now, there are only seven, and one or two of them are having great difficulty in surviving. Today, we look at two of these communities in Newcastle and Gateshead. Geographically the closest of neighbors, in the past they've often been very different in character. In the late 19th century, large numbers of Jews fled from persecution in Russia and Eastern Europe. Some settled on the north bank of the River Tyne in Newcastle, the major regional center of population and business activity. In those days of widespread Saturday working, they preferred to be self-employed so that they could observe the Jewish Sabbath without handicap. Drapery was a common pursuit the best known being Jackson the Tailor, which began in a small shop in Clayton Street in 1899. Succeeding generations, impelled by the deep Jewish respect for learning and service, often entered the medical and legal professions. Many became active in the political life of their adopted city. But while becoming thoroughly British, at the same time they've retained their own religious and cultural identity. Newcastle Jews have always been predominantly orthodox, but never quite orthodox enough for some. As early as 1881, some of the new arrivals broke away and crossed over the river to form their own community in Gateshead. This became and remains one of the most orthodox to be found anywhere. Here, religion embraces every aspect of life to the exclusion of all but the most essential secular matters. One important area for regulation is that of food, and Gateshead even has its own kosher milk delivery service, organized by Joe Salomon. For milk to be kosher, uh, it has to be supervised by a member of the Jewish faith to see that nothing is added to the milk. Also, that all the tanks and bottling plants are clean. For that one has to be there at the first of the early morning milking, which starts uh, five, five o'clock, and uh, by 10 o'clock, or by between 10 and 11, I'm finished with the round. Like other Orthodox communities, Gateshead has its kosher butcher, selling only permitted kinds of meat, killed and treated in certain long-established ways. In fact, every item of food is considered God-given and must be prepared in accordance with Jewish law. But adherence to religious law doesn't come cheap. The supervision and fastidious preparation usually adds something to the price. 
We can't sell all the ordinary goods which you can get at the multiple stores. Most of our goods are manufactured uh, under supervision, under rabbinical supervision. Therefore, they have to be mostly imported or brought up from London, which increases the price. There's plenty of other goods which can be used when, if they are pure, like uh, breakfast cereals, they're the ordinary goods where you can buy them in all the shops. But we concentrate on goods which you can't get in, in normal shops. And of course, try to keep down the price as much as possible because the population can't afford to, to buy more and to, to pay extra. The tradition continues in the home, where again strict regulations govern the preparation and serving of food. For example, dishes and utensils which are used for meat must not be used for milk dishes. Each household has to have two sets of everything. The responsibility for observing the Jewish way of life and passing it on to the children is mainly that of the mother. I think what most people don't realize is that the Jewish religion is not a question of synagogue attendances once a week or on festivals and when appropriate, but it's a complete way of life. I see my role as making sure that our home runs along traditional Jewish lines, making sure that the children are taught routine Jewish practices, such as their prayers, synagogue attendances, basic Hebrew reading. As a mother, I'm the one that spends most of my time with the children, and therefore I see it as absolutely essential to ensure that ways of speech, dress and so on, are set an example by myself and passed on to my children. Everything together makes for a very disciplined way of life, and it's generally found that children respond positively to discipline, and to a discipline which is meaningful and can be upheld throughout one's life and passed on. More than that, it's very important to me to encourage my husband in his study to support him as much as possible and to stand by him in his role as head of the family. During the day, I go to work at the local council as an engineer, and in the evening, I spend a few hours uh, studying Jewish law and uh, Jewish practices. And this is the main purpose and the most satisfying part of my day. Most people in Gateshead also share this view. They spend as much time as they can studying. And in fact, most of the people here do spend their whole days in study. To prepare for a life steeped in their ancient culture, all children in the Gateshead community learn Hebrew from an early age in their own totally integrated school system. These infant girls in the Gateshead Jewish Primary School previously attended the Jewish Kindergarten. When they leave, they'll go to the Jewish Girls High School. Half of each day is spent on Hebrew lessons, the other half on secular studies. Now I want you to try and write down as part... For boys over nine, there's more. At the end of the normal school day, they stay behind for an extra two hours of Hebrew learning. Once again, adherence to tradition has its price. As an independent school, education here is paid for by the parents and the Jewish community although no child is turned away on economic grounds. Well, the school was set up some 30 years ago by our principal, Rabbi Vakshal. Beforehand, when the children were going to the state schools, there were problems regarding Friday afternoon, coming home early for Sabbath and tabernacles, holiday, Passover holidays, various other holidays. And uh, it meant our children missing school and certain other inconveniences. Everybody felt that 
a Jewish community like ours, in order to keep its traditions properly, should have its own school, like all other denominations have got. And therefore, there was 100% parental support. I think the Jewish parents here feel that it's necessary to have a very great deal of Jewish education to equip a child for a Jewish life. And consequently, they need to have a great input of Jewish knowledge from a very early age. And um, all the people in this town feel that that's very important and are prepared to pay for it. As things are standing at present, we see a lot of students coming into town and uh, staying here for quite some time, getting, getting married and staying here for four or five years, even sometimes anything up to 10 years. And uh, they, they want their children to have a good sound edu Jewish education and therefore they uh, prefer to stay here. When we're zong at us gate, our roof of this safe. Gateshead's most remarkable institutions are the Jewish colleges. All local Jewish children attend them after secondary school. The girls go to a seminary, the boys to the yeshiva, or college of Talmud studies. Most won't become teachers or rabbis, but come to complete their grounding in Hebrew learning before preparing for a career. I hope to go to university to study computers and eventually hope to become an accountant. Um, the reason I came here first was because um, uh, Jewish people are commanded to study their law and uh, it's the responsibility of everybody to, um, uh, to study the Torah, whatever pro uh, profession he does. Yeshiva students commonly study up to 14 hours a day. The rhythmical swaying has no religious significance, it's simply a sign of intense concentration. This atmosphere of strict dedication is one factor that attracts scholars from all over Britain and other parts of the world. In fact, out of 300 students, only a minority are Gateshead boys. The college was founded in 1929 by an idealistic gentleman who wanted to transplant the glory of Jewish scholarship from Eastern Europe to Northeast England. Um, the college, of course, received a very large boost in numbers during the 1930s due to the persecution of the Jews by Hitler in Germany. And many Jewish scholars came to Gateshead attracted by the budding reputation of the college and uh, by the orthodox nature of the community which they found here. From that time, the college really consolidated and took off, and since then, its reputation has really become uh, international. So much so that today, this modest building, in the unlikeliest of northern industrial towns, is regarded as the Oxford and Cambridge of Jewish learning in Europe. By contrast with Gateshead's 100% provision, Newcastle has only two Jewish educational establishments, a thriving nursery school and a not quite so thriving day school for infants and juniors. The Gateshead Jewish Primary School has over 200 pupils. The Newcastle Jewish Day School has only 34, a third of them non-Jewish. There's no shortage of outsiders wanting to get in. It's attracting Jewish families that isn't so easy. Our school, although it's now been going for about 16 years, still has many, many other schools to compete with, some of which the parents actually attended themselves. And we have to change their tradition in many ways and get them here. We're doing our best. Every year we get a couple more coming along. And once you've got the first child in the family, then hopefully you get the rest of them coming as well. We feel that we offer a good all-round education at this school. And certainly the standard of our Hebrew education is infinitely superior to anything they will get outside of the school. If they don't come here to school, they then have to go to Hebrew classes outside. Sunday mornings and during the week and the evenings when the children are possibly tired or not necessarily at their most receptive. But although the school might wish for more orthodox commitment, there's one group for whom the Newcastle congregation is too orthodox. Hitler's purges, which drove many scholars to Gateshead, also brought a number of less orthodox Jews. So in September 1939, Hugo Lerbel-Zerner of Bavaria became Loblite Limited of the Team Valley trading estate Gateshead.